Hey Dividend Investors, today I'm going to be talking to you about basically how you're able to tell and why companies go bankrupt. So today we're basically going to be talking to you about Rogers, Tell Us About, and Kojiko and why I personally think that the end is sort of kind of near for these companies. So as we've seen in the past, whenever a company decides not to roll with the new times, not to basically invest in new technologies, they tend to go under. This is also going into effect for companies like AT&T and Verizon as well. This is not just a Canadian problem, this is a worldwide problem. Now I'm not saying that this is a massive end of world problem, what I'm saying is there's a new decade coming up on us and that is satellite internet. We've had satellite internet in the past, this is nothing really new. SpaceX, however, is doing something that is kind of new, and that is having the satellites lower, having more of these satellites, so that now the whole entire world can have internet based from them. Now, why is this great? Well, the good thing is, is of course, company, or I almost said companies, but countries like China can no longer go out and say, we don't want you to see that website. Because if a Chinese person is purchasing SpaceX internet, guess what? SpaceX is an American company and they are going to allow it to be open to everybody. So that is going to be huge news. That's going to help a lot of different areas of the world. Also areas of the world like Africa where there really isn't much internet going on way out in the middle of nowhere. In the middle of a desert, there's no internet. So you would be able to get internet in basically blackout zones. This will open up the internet to the world. However, it's also going to really destroy some of these traditional companies like Rogers, AT&T, TELUS, Bell, Kojiko, and all of them. And as of right now, they're doing actually not that bad. Like a company like Rogers is paying 3% of a dividend, while TELUS is paying almost 5% of a dividend. Kojiko's paying 2.2% of a dividend. And Bell, which is BCE, is paying a massive 6% dividend. And then when you start looking at like a five year chart, they tend to be going up other than Rogers. So they seem to be doing really well at this point in time. However, I'm going to say this right now. Currently, SpaceX is launching satellites to space into low Earth orbit so that basically all of North America right now could technically use SpaceX, but they just don't have the infrastructure yet to be able to have every single house onto their network. They can't. That's going to take a couple of years. However, some of the houses out in the middle of nowhere in Canada, Ontario, and the United States have the option to get it. And there is a big startup cost. I think it's somewhere in the five or six hundred dollar range to be able to get started, which is expensive. However, if you're looking out there for a house right now, in which I am, I'm looking a little bit out in the farmland country here in Ontario because I want to get out of the city. And when you start looking out there, you're looking at internet that's maybe five megabytes a second down. And for me, I need fast because I'm uploading videos all day, every single day, because I upload to four different YouTube channels almost pretty well daily. So. Because of that, I, I can't get out there yet, but with with SpaceX internet that is doing 500, or sorry, 50 plus megabytes a second, that's starting to become more and more reliable, and of course, more and more feasible for me and for other people as well. So this is why companies like Kojiko, Bell, and Rogers are going to be in trouble. Is this going to really be a huge turnover? Probably not over the next five years. So you could be safe investing in these companies for the next five years. But if you start looking 10 years out, none of these Canadian companies are currently investing into satellite internet. They're not investing into satellite infrastructure for satellite internet. And if they are, they're putting those satellites super high because you can get satellite internet here in Canada, but it's ex still extremely slow. And this is a big reason why I think these companies are in trouble. I used to work in a tech store and a lot of their regional sales reps and provincial sales reps as well as national sales reps would come into the stores and none of them would 
side with me and say, yeah, you know what? It does look like we're in a little bit of trouble. You know what their response to me was? It's never going to work. It's never going to be allowed. The Canadian government, the CRTC, is not going to allow it to happen. Well, guess what? They're turning a blind eye right now, and there are Canadians right now who are getting SpaceX internet. So, it's going to be the exact same thing as what we've seen with the Bay. The Bay had their Bay catalog, or whatever it was, Hudson Bay Company, they had their catalog, that was basically Amazon 1.0. They would send it to your house, you'd look through a magazine and say, I want that, and then they would send it to you. Obviously, you pay them with a check, and that was basically, that was, that was basically online shopping, if you really think about it. And they just didn't transfer that magazine to online. I don't know how they were dumb enough not to do that, but, or the Sears catalog whatever it was and th these are companies I've never shopped with like y you can tell Bay catalog Sears catalog whatever they probably Bay probably had one too who knows who cares Sears and Bay are basically dead and or Sears is dead and when you really start looking at it they could have easily transferred to online and been the first online store. All of these companies could have done this. Walmart could have been number one. It didn't have to be Jeff Bezos and Amazon. Imagine if, if Walmart was the first one. Imagine having an Amazon valuation inside of a Walmart valuation. You are now looking at probably one of the biggest companies in the world ever. So this is what I'm talking about. If you are looking at a company that you want to invest in, are they investing themselves into the future or are they staying in the past? Bell, Rogers, Kojiko, uh, Telus, they are all living in the past. They think that wired connections are going to be the future. Even we have Doug Ford as well as Justin Trudeau who are both saying here's millions or billions of dollars to these companies so that they can invest in infrastructure so that we can get internet and fast uh, gigabit internet everywhere. Well, you know what? That is the past. It's going to cost billions upon billions of dollars to stretch gigabit internet across the country. And guess what? SpaceX is already giving you close to gigabit speeds in some areas. They keep on adding on to this network. It's going to be over for these companies. These companies are going to be losing at least a half to a third of their business, and it's not going to look good. Do not, you can, but do not look at Kojiko Rogers Telus Bell as a future investment for 10 years. Look at it as a one, two, or three year flip and see what happens. They are paying, and some of them are good, paying pretty good uh, dividends. So you can get off of that, you can win off of that, but they're not investing into the future. Any company that doesn't invest into the future is going to be dead. That is my thought, and that's how I run my investing. Um, thesis anyways is dividends number one number two are those companies investing into the future this was more or less a rant i hope that you didn't mind and i'll see you guys again next time